hunters are dying off. Stories of them seem to be fading away. Distant and forgotten, they linger ever so slightly in our imagination. Sometimes, however, stories of them resurfacing are whispered into the night. Modern day hunters, much like their primitive ancestors before them, they hunt in a concrete jungle of buildings and alleyways. Some do it for pleasure, some do it for survival, and then some, some do it for honor. Sick too. Got a bunch of sickies. Around, I tell you, crazy. Well, we're talking with uh, Chris Raybeck, and he's the director of the Longbow Hunters. Her uh, first part of what was supposed to be a three-parter. We were just talking about that, uh, Chris. As what came first, the chicken or the egg there, we know there was a Green Arrow trailer and some of the footage was in the Longbow Hunters. How'd that come about? What came first and, and how did some of the footage uh, end up in the Longbow Hunters? That's a, that's a whole long story. but um, Go for it. I actually worked on uh, Green Arrow with, uh, with a friend and we had a bit of a falling out and uh, they had footage and they put it up and didn't give me credit and it was a whole nightmare. So I continued on and, and made what I made and used the footage and you know, we, we kind of lost touch afterwards, and it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's history, and that's what happened. So, kind of crazy. Yeah, because I know I was watching the Green Arrow uh, trailer, and I don't want to stir up any bad blood or anything, so feel free to answer or not, but I didn't see your name in any of the credits or anything. Was that kind yeah, of that, a snub? Yeah, that's, that was what kind of really kind of stopped us from talking. It was, and, it, you know, it, it's been a long time, and we haven't talked, but he was a really good friend, and, and I'm kind of over it, but... But yeah, they didn't give me any credit, and I put a lot of effort and time and money, and had directed the stuff they used, and and then when I found out it was, I was still shooting. I was still in the impression we were still shooting, so I was still setting up, you know, fight choreography and, and doing stuff like that. And then uh, come to find out, they had already put this stuff out on the internet without my name on it. So that's pretty upset, you know, to say the least. And yeah, kind of happened that way. And I had, we didn't ever, we never talked again. That was kind of that, and they finally did give me credit. Um, eventually, after Harrison Youngdag, who was like the the main mafia boss, right? Um, they put my name on the website. So, you know, live and learn. And it's you know, it's a fan film, so you know, it could have been a lot worse. But uh, that's okay. kind of what happened. Did the original the concept, the original Green Arrow trailer, was the original concept something totally different than Longbow Hunters? And if so, how did you incorporate? the older footage into into the newer concept. Yeah, it, it was a little different initially. Um, it, it, I mean, the same, I mean, it really went back to the comic. Um, I don't know if you guys read the comic. It's a great comic. I mean, The Longbow Hunter is like a three-part. I got the graphic novel, and I kind of started researching. And, uh, I, I mean, to be honest, when I first looked at Green Arrow, I wasn't overly into Green Arrow until I found The Longbow Hunters. And then oh, yeah. this really changed my you know opinion, because it's just so dark and gritty and, and reality based and you know you got this character Shadow and, and, and Green Arrow and the Mafia and just everything it really was just a, a great series so that kind of was the base for everything really um, and uh, initially it was just the, the short with Green Arrow we were kind of working on it was based off that it had Star City we were using Star City not Seattle but we, so we were kind of combining the old comics and some of the new stuff too um, I don't know if you guys know, there was like a series of the Hitman called Draken. I think it was Draken. What is it now? Draken. I think it was a straight shooter series for Green Arrow. No, not too sure about he, that one myself. He was. It was a newer series. It was the straight shooter series, and he was kind of a. I mean, he was an assassin. He was pretty badass. So we kind of incorporated him into the, the initial story. We didn't have a lot of shadow initially, and then, like I said, things kind of fell apart. And I personally like. I love Green Arrow, but I love Shadow as well. I mean, she was. Oh, yeah. Equally, if not even more badass than Green Arrow was, so kind of a cool character. So we, uh, I just kept going with it, and had a 
great actress, um, slash like stunt person, uh, Gracie, who was Shadow. And uh, yeah, actually, we just started shooting, and we kind of made the first part a little more about Shadow. And then um, the idea was going to be that we would continue on, and the second part would be more about Green Arrow, and then the third part would be more about this uh, bad hitman called Drock, and you see him in part two as well. But, you know, kind of the idea would be that at the end of it, you would have three ultimate badasses kind of in a way, and you put them in a room together to make them fight, and, you know, kind of have this big showdown. Um, you know, and then she, obviously Shadow had her own story going on where she was looking to get, you know, uh, revenge for what happened to her father. And, and uh, yeah, it just, uh, it, was, uh, it was a big, you know, big undertaking, to say the least. I agree with you on a lot of fronts there. I'm a gigantic fan of the Longbow Hunters, especially Mike Grell in general. And uh, the Green Arrow Longbow Hunters is basically the Green Arrow's version of the Dark Knight Returns. Because it's yeah. gritty, it's real. He's not using these boxing glove arrows or the fucking exploding gas arrows. He's using real arrows. He's killing people. So it, yeah. it's yeah. not kid stuff. It's not the super friends. You know what I mean? It's more real deal. Yeah. That's why I love that series. And it was drawn so beautif- you know, beautifully by Mike Grell. And it was just a great piece of work all around. So, so uh, that's why I really appreciate your film, because you're using that version of the Green Arrow, who are, that is love, you know, with the with, with the hood and the mat, the domino mat under the hood and all that stuff. It looks like Robin Hood more. And so it's, it, it's a great, man, great uh, translate, translation of the book, pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's unique. I mean, like I said, the other is just the boxing arrows and stuff is just, so, such a different feel. It's yeah. you know, it's just a different green arrow <laughs> to me, at least. I, I didn't I didn't see any green arrow car. What's up with that? That yeah, green arrow car is that you said? Yeah, you remember that car from the Silver Age? Uh, I, you know, I think I saw pictures of it. I mean, it was pretty cheesy if I remember right. But uh, it is extremely. Yeah. It's a big yellow arrow car with like red fins on it. It's horrendous. Uh, how old a guy are you, Chris? Just because I'm nosy. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm 31. I'm actually I probably sound younger than I am, but yeah, 31. Oh yeah, you're still a young chap. I'm st- he's young. a year under me. I'm 32. Hey. <laughs> no, we, pro- we probably picked up the book at the same time. I, I I picked it up when I was like 13, I think, something like that. 14. What's um? I remember a while back when when I first discovered the film, um, Harrison Young, who played uh, Magner, who was the uh, the bad guy in the film. Now, I, I understand he did pass away, and to my understanding, this was a big part to to why you didn't come out with the two parts, or the two other parts, because this was originally supposed to be a three-part series, correct? Yeah, yeah, initially it was. You know, the idea would be that three parts and, and you know, they would complete, you know, one story. Kind of like the, the graphic novels, there were three parts like I had. Um, but, yeah, he was, he did such a, I mean, he was such a cool guy. I mean, if, I mean, some people, and I'm using Saving Private Ryan, he played, like, the older Matt Damon, and uh, he's been in a lot of movies. He's done a lot of stuff. Um, I think one of his last films is Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang, which is a pretty funny movie. Yeah, that like is a that. good movie. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. But he, you know, he was just way cool. We'd do rehearsals at his house, and um, totally mellow guy, just way laid back. And, you know, when he came, I mean, he drove down to San Diego. I was going up to L.A. to do meetings and stuff, but I'm out of San Diego. So, you know, I'd be doing the carpool thing, and I wanted to film the parking garage scene, which, you know, with his big scene in, in the a local parking garage I had access to, so I wanted him to come down, and he, I mean, he was so cool about it, like, he really didn't care, he actually hung out at my family's house, and had snacks with us, and it was bullshit with my parents and my sisters, and just a really cool guy, and people were asking for his, I mean, you know, friends were kind of bullshit with him on the set, and getting his autograph, and he, he just ate it up, he was really cool, so, when I found out he passed away, I was, you know, it was, it was, there was already so many issues with everything that happened before, and I kind of had a I, I, you know, I enjoyed doing it, but at the same way, I kind of had a bittersweet, you know, it was, it had its bad things, too, so I, I was really kind of torn if I wanted to do more, and, and when that happened, I kind of was, I was kind of over it for a while, you know. Cronin, we have a problem. My people can handle it. Really? Yeah. Listen to me. I told you I can handle it. Listen, Cronin, and understand this. Five more of my men are dead. Your annoyances have some people in high places looking over their back. Now, we work too long and too hard to fuck this up now. We've got this little reporter girl down here looking for drugs. This vigilante guy that thinks he's some kind of a Robin Hood. It's killing my business. Business is fucking good. It's good. We're moving fast. Things are picking up. I'm telling you. Really? Yeah. 
Things are better. You know it. Let me show you something. Now you're going to tell me how to run my business? There he is with a fucking arrow in his head. Look, you don't think I'd let anything go wrong, do you? Now, I've been at this a lot of fucking years, Nagner. I'm telling you, shipping will come in. I don't give a damn about what's coming in. I only care about what's going out. If this gets all fucked up, it'll burst that little balloon over your head. Okay, I understand. Do you? Look, I told you I'll take care of everything, and I will. Tron and you talk too much. You gotta learn to listen to me and do what I tell you. I, I, I was on Mike Grell's uh, site, and he actually acknowledged um, the film. Have you had the opportunity to That's right. to speak with Mr. Grell, and uh, he shot any kudos your way beyond that? Yeah, you know, he. I can't. I think I got in touch with him. Um, at some point, just to kind of let him know I had done, you know, that he obviously was inspired by his stuff he had done, and and just kind of let him know what I had done with the short film. And uh, I think I never heard from him, you know, personally. And it was through email. I, someone from his website uh, kind of passed along what he had said, and, you know, that they thought it was, they enjoyed it, and they put it up, and they had a link on that for a long time. Um, it's still there. It doesn't go anywhere, but oh. the link's still on the website. Perfect. Yeah, I haven't. I, I know it was like a one page where I could kind of find it. And I haven't looked on it recently. Um, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, the guy that I talked to was very nice, and you know, they put it up and had it on there for a while. And I mean, micro stuff is pretty amazing. It is. I actually you have a kind of a mini story about uh, micro. I was at the Big Apple Con in New York City. This was like maybe two years ago, and he was appearing it as one of the guest artists. So I said. Oh, perfect, you know, so it was the middle of the con, and I was thinking about it, and I said, let me go see him now, so I went down there, and there was an empty table, and an empty seat, and I said to the guy next to him, hey, what's the deal with my girl, is he here? He said, no, no, you missed him by about 10 minutes, he's gone, and he hardly ever comes to New York, so I basically blew my chance, I was really disappointed, because it's, oh, I really sucks. love his stuff, so. That sucks, that would have been cool, yeah, it would be cool to sit down and talk with him, just... That's it. I thought maybe you got on a bus later and something. He was on there. I was I was expecting a happy ending. You want more? You want like you know shootouts and backflips? <laughs> I, can, I can add that in there if you want. Make I can some, levitate some point. Make up some shit. <laughs> I'll shoot a boxing glove arrow at Chris Mosier in the head. Yeah, exactly. My partner. Boing, right in the middle. Have you had a chance to uh, to read his um, John Sable Freelance series at all? No. You know what? Like I saw his artwork for that, and it looked really. You need, I'm, I'm kind of in, and I don't know much about it, so tell me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like it was very much like a detective kind of series, and, uh, you know, it, the artwork was pretty amazing, and I'm a big into, like, film noir and, and detective kind of, you know, the old detective movies and stuff like that, so I don't, I don't know much about it, but it looked really cool. I mean... He, it's kind of a detective book, but at the same time, he's more kind of like a... Uh, he's a mercenary, in a way. He's a mercenary. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, that's even better. But there is kind of like that detective element in there. It's a great book. Definitely good stuff. Oh. It was on First Comics a long, long time ago. I forget the, the oh, yeah. first... Like, 87 was his first issue, I think. First and Comico and all that good yep. and all that stuff. No. Yep. Those are all long gone. Now defunct. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Chris, you also did another fan film um, that I found... Um, unless there's other, or there's another Chris Freyback uh, doing fan films out there. The Crow, is that you? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was like the first thing I ever really, really did. And I was a big fan of the Crow, the original Crow. Um, yeah, the second one had interesting cinematography, but the acting was pretty atrocious. Um, and they just kind of got progressively worse. I don't know if you saw the last Crow film that came out, but that was a joke. No. Uh, oh. It's bad. I almost go around just to watch it and laugh because it's pretty bad. I seen that or the, yeah, TV, no. or the TV series. I never saw the series. No, me neither. I heard kind of mixed, you know. It was supposed to be Eric Draven. It was supposed to kind of continue on, which I don't know how I feel about that because I kind of feel like his business is done right. in the first one. Yeah, he got the revenge he wanted, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a revenge story. It's perfect, you know. It's done and, and over with. But, yeah, we did. I did that, and uh, that was, you know, I... It, it's cool. I actually, you know, it was a good time, and I look back on it, and I kind of cringe at times because there was some cheesy stuff we did in that, you know, not knowing any better. It was, like, the first thing I'd done. But, uh, but yeah, and that's another thing I've kind of thought about. You know, it'd be fun to do another Crow film sometime. Yeah, interesting. I love The Crow. The first original was just a great, great movie. Yeah. 
I remember I gave uh, your Crow film a really good review, review on Fanboy Theater um, a while back. Do you do? The, I love the, that website. I mean, I love that you guys do the reviews. I really appreciate. I mean, you guys give some really uh, just just really appreciate all the, the feedback you guys had on there. Thanks. I mean, it, we're here for you. It, you know, we're we're a showcase of talented people, basically. Right, Chris? Well, what's that? Yes. And I'm just correct. checking out your podcast stuff, too, which is just, I mean, really cool. It's awesome you guys are doing this. It's just, uh, it's kind of selfish. It's our chance to talk to all you guys. And gals. Yeah. <laughs> hey. We have an excuse. We're friends. <laughs> uh, I'm nobody, but that's cool. <laughs> we're lower than nobody, so. Yes, yeah. we're... <laughs> We're scum. We suck. We I'm nothing. I'm navel and I have to lie to women to get laid. And, and, I, and I don't score much. I got a little dick. It's pathetic. <laughs> One question I wanted to ask you about the uh, original Green Arrow film. Why the sword? Or the swords, I should say. That wasn't that wasn't my, my call. That was, oh, okay. filmed, that was filmed after. Um, uh, like I said, they, I, I don't know the full story, so it's kind of... Yeah, I don't. I, my speculation is that they had planned on maybe doing that. I, I don't know. I really don't know. One of the guys just kind of. I don't know. It was an interesting situation, but they went out and filmed other stuff. Um, and yeah, the sword was part of that. I don't know how I feel about that. I, you know, and, and that was mentioned when we were filming the sword. I think they actually had picked up the sword, but we weren't using it. Um, and then they did that whole shot where he's putting the stuff, which actually is filmed very nice. Very has. It is pretty cool. Right? Kind of, yeah, he's like so. You know, he's kind of getting ready. He's, putting the sword in and kind of pulling the bow around and it was done really well. I actually liked that a lot and I wasn't part of that so I don't know what the, the whole story there was. Yeah, they're trying to get in like the whole Robin Hood aspect too. Yeah, you know, definitely. The sword. Probably, yeah. I would, I would think. Green Arrow and his merry men. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Off to save the day. Yeah. Well, what do you do now, Chris? I mean, how did you get into to filmmaking... Anyways, and as far as where are you going with it, if you're even going anywhere with it? Yeah, you know, I, I've always been into film since like I was a kid, and I just kind of had a passion for it. And I was in the Coast Guard for a while, got out, and uh, started going to school. But I, I just started filming on my own, just for fun. And, uh, you know, I get together with friends. I just grab a whole bunch of friends and go out and film little action scenes or whatever. And, uh, you know, one of my friends, we had talked about Crow films, and we decided to try to make a crow fan film. That was kind of the first big way to go with it. And, you know, um, kept going from there, did the Green Arrow thing. I've done other short films. And uh, lately, I honestly, I started doing, uh, you know, I do freelance work, videography, uh, and I do wedding videography in San Diego, which is really kind of picked up pretty pretty decently. So in a way, I kind of get paid to do video work, which is it's pretty cool. I can't complain about that, you know. <laughs> I used to do that in my uh, my late uh, teens and early twenties. I worked for a company here in Rochester in uh, videotape weddings. So, what would you think of that? It's, I mean, it's it's fun. You got it. It's stressful at times for me too. It's like a mixed thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. Because you get one chance to get certain shots, and if you muck it up, then that's it. It's gone. So yeah, it is. It's very stressful at times, but it was fun. Knock on wood. I've never had that happen, and I've been very lucky. I've had some really good clients. But it is, you know, the day of can be a little stressful, but it's good money, you know. I can't. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I used to, I had my regular job during the week, and then uh, I did a couple weddings on the weekend, and I was, I mean, for my age, I was doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Chris directs bondage films. <laughs> yes, now I now I went into bondage <laughs> films and uh, you know, S and M farm animals. <laughs> oh, He's the gimp. Archer from weddings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I film a mat wedding. All this stuff happens. We've got strange weddings in Rochester. I gotcha. I gotcha. You don't want to go there, trust me. <laughs> Scary <laughs> place. Uh, what? Well, I got some other questions. Um, the elaborate tattoo on Shadow's arm, which he has in the series, how did that get done? Because it looks so great. We actually, you know, we went to a, a local um, a local tattoo artist named Gary Hoek, um from Ace Tattoo. And he did, it's, it's a fake tattoo. I mean, he just, you get those markers that you can get right. that are used for movie stuff, and he did an amazing job. Like, he, he was very, very cool. I mean, everything, you know, from that film, I mean, I, I owe it to a lot of people. I mean, there's just a huge amount of work that went into, you know, helping out and doing stuff. And and he, you know, we went in that morning the day before we shot, and he, uh, I think it took him like an hour maybe to do that at most. Wow. He did it pretty fast. And, uh, you know, we just, tried to keep it, you know, 
as clean as possible. It had a sealant on top of it. Um, but after the end of the day, we, we got lucky. We got the shots we needed. By the end of the day, it kind of faded just because of all. She was doing a lot of, you know, the big fight scene was that day. So she was doing a lot of running around and kicking and sweating and, you know, people bumping into it. But uh, he did a really good job. Also, um, where did you shoot the film primarily? Was it different locations or one location? Or it was, yeah, it was at first initially when I was working, helping out and doing the Green Arrow initial thing. It was in L.A. and I was going out to L.A. and uh, pretty much all the Green Arrow stuff, like the fight, the end of the fight of Longbow Hunters in, is in L.A. Um, and most of that. Then the, and for the rest, I did in San Diego because I'm, I'm based out of San Diego, and uh, so the shadow fight scene was like a local bar. Um, in San Diego, and the rest was like, you know, alleyways in San Diego or locations in San Diego. So, I mean, all of Southern California, pretty much. You go to the con there a lot? San Diego's got to be like, uh, you've got like consistent weather. It's always 70 or 80 there. You ever been there? I can't. Ever been there? Yeah, I, you know what? Like, I go to the con every year now. I, lo I love the con. It's such a good time. And San Diego's a great place. I, I have no complaints about San Diego whatsoever. Um, it's it's beautiful, but the con. Have you guys been to the Comic Con? It's such it's just such a good time. Yeah, I was there in um, 2006, and it was just awesome. It's an it's an awesome city, and just in in the morning, it's you, you got the clouds and and kind of the mist, and then by the afternoon, it's just sun, and just consistently every day, and it's just a beautiful city. I'm ashamed I've never been. My whole life, I've been wanting to go there. Never, never got a chance. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Come down to the con and just, I mean, it's such an experience. I mean, you run into celebrities like left and right. I mean, everybody there is just having a good time. And, and San Diego in general is just, I mean, it's a beautiful day today. It's sunny out and nice weather, and I can't complain. Yeah, that one's definitely on the wish list for sure. Was there any point where you wanted to incorporate uh, Black Canary into the film? or? Yeah, she or was initially in the, in the original, and but not in the sense of Black Canary. I mean... I, it's touchy. I, it, Black Canary to me, it's it's interesting, but the whole sonic scream and that can work, and it it can. I mean, really, the way I wanted to do this was a really gritty, dark reality, somewhat reality based kind of short. And you know, the idea that this you know Green Arrow he he learns to kind of hunt and survive on this this island, and and he enjoys the hunt. He talks about that in the Longbow Hunter and. It's kind of, it's interesting. I mean, in a way, and he's like, you know, if we built him up as like this urban myth, he's kind of like a human predator in a way. Like, he, he enjoys the hunting and, and fighting crime. And, you know, we had her kind of, in the script is, she was there kind of like the longbow hunter. She doesn't have the sonic scream. She's kind of a regular person. Um, and I, actually, in the comic series, she has some really dark stuff happen to her. She's, like, beaten in that. I don't think, and they kind of insinuate she's raped. Um so yeah, no, whenever in the sense of the black canary. Yeah, she's sexually abused because in the, if I do remember correctly, when it got to the series, didn't she kind of shy away from Oliver in the beginning to to not be touched and so on? Yeah, you know, I can't remember what happened after. Because I, I really honestly looked at The Long Bull Hunter and a few of the recent comics, and those are kind of where I I didn't follow the series after The Long Bull Hunter. Um but, uh, I mean, she was definitely different than she is in the newer comics as Black Canary. She, she was his girlfriend, and, you know, he, he would confide in her. And I think they even kind of went to the... She had blonde hair in that, I think, and she had a black wig that she put on. Um, it, it, it was, she had blonde hair normally, but she, had a, she wore a black wig, or she had black hair in the series, like Longbow Hunter. It, it was different. I mean, she was just totally different. She wasn't really the Black Canary from what I... I thought it was the other she way actually around. Had like... Go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say, I thought it was the other way around. She had black hair, and then she put on the, the blonde wig. But I'm not... Exactly. That, that's what it was, because she yeah. normally, Black Mary has blonde hair normally. So, um, yeah, I think that's what it was. It was it was definitely not the typical approach to, to her character. In the series, right after the Longbow Hunters, her hair is actually short and, bob and black. That's her real hair, because I read that series for a while. That's cool. So that's, that's like the... the you know her real hair and stuff. So, I mean, I mean, what do you guys think about the character? It's, it, I, I mean, love it's the green now. The black canary. I think she, he's talking about. Yeah. Oh, the black canary. Uh, it is, are you talking about the ca character in the regular book? 
Yeah, yeah, her, you know, her initial, you know, with the, the sonic scream and, and all that. Yeah, well, you know, in the in the girl version, she is kind of laid back and just normal, like Chris, Chris Mosier said. Um, so, I don't know, she, she's really not Black Canary. You know, it's more Dinah Lance. She runs the flower that's shop. That's, that's right. The, uh, the flower shop to eat. Joe's like, my dog. Yeah. What's going on over there at the zoo? <laughs> oh, what the hell's every, happening? Chris, every Somebody freaking time killed? we do one of these, my dog... Are... They always give their opinion of the fan films, whether we like it or not. <laughs> They're giving you a barks up. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a chance to read Kevin Smith's uh, run on the Green Arrow story at all? Yeah, I did. I, I, I first put it. Didn't, I didn't go through um, the full series, I think. And it was interesting, because like, Green Arrow had died by then, right? And he was resurrected, if I remember right. Yes. Um, it was interesting to me. I... I you know, I, I'm very weird. I don't necessarily like when they mix superheroes, and I know he did a lot of that, like Batman and Superman were kind of hanging out. And, and I don't know why. I usually like my superheroes just to be kind of on their own and in their own world. And I, I like comics that are more reality-based. Um, so when I was reading it, it had a lot of the Batman and Superman kind of reminiscing about Green Arrow. Um, it didn't grab me initially. Uh, that's just my taste. Yeah, everybody's got their own thing. Well, I could see where you're coming from, right? but I'm kind of I'm in, I'm into a mix of both, like superheroes and real life gritty stuff, you know. So I go back and forth. Yeah, it, there's times where it works great. Don't get me wrong. And I actually was watching recently the Justice League cartoon. Did you guys see that? Oh about? yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, Good it stuff. was actually there's times where it works really well. I thought, you know, um, and I thought they did a great job with Green Arrow. Um, Is you know. The whole Black Canary and Green Arrow story. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yep. That episode. It was great. But um. Good chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And, and there's so there's times where I like it. And there's times where it comes off as cheesy. I don't know. What do you think about the uh, Smallville portrayal of the Green Arrow? Have you, see, have you got a chance to see that at all? I did. You know, I saw a little bit. Like I actually looked it up on YouTube because I was curious. <laughs> mm-hmm. What I, do you think? I want to watch a show, and I just was so far behind. I never watched the first series. Um. I don't like going in the middle of something, so I... Yeah, it's definitely I mean, something you got to start from the beginning. Yeah, that's true. I agree. But they, they did a cool job, I thought. Like, it was unique the way, you know... I thought the, it, the intro of Green Arrow was pretty whoop ass, you know? <laughs> so they did a pretty good job from what I saw of Green Arrow. And there was a Black Canary episode on that. Yep. I saw that, yeah. The, I saw the um, commercial for it, and I don't know. I, I didn't see the episode. I don't know what I think about that. I'm kind of like half and half on it. I don't know how Chris Mosier... I, have, I haven't seen that episode yet. I do the DVD thing, so I haven't seen this. The episode's before. called Siren. You can look it up. Uh, are you, what, what would be a cool effect? Do you remember the old Generation X? Uh, oh my god, that one-shot thing? <laughs> the Banshee? That was kind of a cool effect. When he was doing the scream. Yeah, they could do that. That could, you know, that could be cool. The, Did you ever see the that? The small the one is really cool. I haven't seen it. I, haven't, I can't compare. It's I crazy. seen it. Have you seen ever seen Generation X? Um, it was a TV badly done TV movie, uh, Chris. About no, the, I, I remember it, but I never watched it. So I, I know what you're talking about. It's very action men based. I mean, exactly. Yeah, it had uh, a Banshee and uh, uh, Ella, who was Fro- uh, shit, Who was the other teacher there? Uh, Emma Frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. But anyways, they. The only reason I brought it up is because they had Banshee and his scream in there. And that's pretty much similar to the Black Canary's power. So it looked mm-hmm. it looked pretty cool. I think it could be done. I mean, we're talking back in the early 90s when that came out. Yeah, so this was like, sure was it was a 94 maybe? Now. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed. I, I, if it's done right, I have no problem with, you know, any of that. I think it's, you know, I, I like the branching out on Smallville from what I can understand. You know, they're... Weren't they going to do a Justice League kind of episode, or did they do that? Oh, they did that, uh, it was last season, right? The, yep, Justice. That came out pretty good. Cool. they have Aquaman? They had, like, did they have Batman or not? Uh, no, he hasn't been on there yet. It was Aquaman, it was Cyborg, it was... Um, uh, Impulse instead of Flash. Yeah, and one other one. Oh, the Green Arrow. And Green Arrow. Yeah. And Clarky. Yeah, and Clark. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big Superman. I mean, as far as the films go, I'm a big Superman fan. I, I didn't read the comics as much, but uh, I was always a big fan of the Richard Donner films. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, even the Superman Returns, I had issues with it, but but you know, I had that score, and it had, you know, I, I think the sequel, Man of Steel, will be awesome. I'm hoping. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Is Brian Singer going to be directing that I mean, film? Supposedly. 
Yeah, supposedly. I mean, it's they've had issues, and I know there's a whole lawsuit going on where they just um, the comic creators are going to get a portion of the funds. But he's saying it's going to be his wrath con. It's going to be all action this time, and hey, that works for me. So I, I hope. Are they going to be going with Ralph for this one, or going to be casting another Superman? No, it's, it's supposed to be Ralph. Yep. From, from what I hear, I mean, he's said he's on board. Warner Brothers wants to get it going. They they want to start shooting. And I honestly like that. I like the idea of these, you know, the Batman series. I like that they're, you know, keeping it in the continuity and for the most part keeping everybody the same. And Christian Bale did a great job. And I think Brandon Routh is fairly new, but I think he can do a good job. And I, I look forward to more with that character and other characters. So we'll see. So yeah, I didn't have a problem with Brandon. It was just, the whole movie was just weird. Weird. It was. There's a lot of things was, to question. What would you think? I mean, it was... I mean, I understand the love story. They're trying to build that up, and I did not like the kid. It really bothered me. I don't, I don't know if people like that, you know, but I can see if they're doing it in the sense that they're going to kill him off in the sequel and make it, you know, really... Not to mention how does Clark react to the kid that he knows it's his kid, but he can't let him know he's Clark Clint. So that Clark Clark, so that's kind of interesting, but it was weird that they did that, I thought. Yeah, it was a strange element to put in there. Yeah. I didn't see that one comment at all. I didn't either. I didn't either. Very weird. I was like, say what? I think everybody in the audience is like, <laughs> what? But, yeah, well, hopefully, I mean, I think he's learned as well. And Brian Singer, I mean, I love X-Men. Oh, yeah. Great with me. So, I, I think, and I mean, Usual Suspects is a great movie, one of my favorites. Um, I think he's a good director. I think he knows what he's got to do now, and that's, uh, I'm hoping. And I'm hoping Dark, you know, Dark Knight is whoop ass, too, because it looks great so far. I'm yeah, that's... Saturday Night 3. You know, it looked great, and it was kind of crappy, I thought. I just really wanted more Venom. That's me. That's me, too, but I, I thought it was pretty good overall. I, I actually, yeah, I liked it. I, you know, it, don't get me wrong. It's not a horrible movie. I just... I really was so pumped on Venom, and he had such little screen time. And not to mention, I thought his acting was a little cheesy at times. I was expecting more. I, I'm looking forward to Spider-Man 4, which they're supposedly going to do sometime when they figure everything out. Yeah, I don't know about their choice for Eddie Brock. There's a guy from that 70s show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that's that's kind of, you know, when he was Venom, I thought he did a really bad job of acting. I didn't like it. I, I didn't like the Supposed way... to be like some bruiser, you know, like right. some broken-nosed, bald-headed bruiser. Yeah. Like, I'll moitalize you. Like, one of those kind of guys, you know? Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Like some little kid. I'm like, what? <laughs> Is it Venom, really? Yeah. Pencil neck geek. It's tough. It... it... It's not a horrible movie. I, I, I had such high expectations, I think. And that's part of my problem. If I get really high expectations on a movie, it usually doesn't live up to it. If I have low expectations, I'm okay. As comic book fans, we always have high expectations. That's the problem a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. We expect I'm worried everything. About Dark Knight. It looks like it's going to be a, a great movie. I, I mean, I'm really digging it so far, but... I have, I'm worried it's not going to live up to the hype, but we'll see. I mean, no, no matter what, I mean, they're going to probably do a third one. I'm sure it'll be Two Face, and I like their choice of uh, actor for Two Face and Hardy Dent. Definitely, hopefully, Catwoman they'll throw in there, in the third one. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. I look forward to seeing, you know, his costume transition throughout the films. Yeah, what do you guys think of the costume so far? The first one was way too armory for me, but I liked it. The new one is kind of like a watered down version of the first one. It's to go and come more towards the spandex thing, I think. I don't eventually. see any difference in the, from the Tim Burton movies. That's right. Pretty much the same. What? No rubber suit, think, though. Uh, the original Tim Burton to me is still my favorite, uh, with Jack Nicholson and the joke. Right. It just had to look, you know, and I really like Batman Begins, don't get me wrong, but there's, there's an element to the Burton films of making Gotham City really gothic and crazy looking, and it kind of worked better for me at times. Um, but yeah, I, I still enjoy the movie. I think they're on the right track. Yeah, I, I dug those two. The first two were great. Yeah, yeah. The, the circus got a little crazy with the, the penguin, but I mean, Catwoman was so good, and, and Michael Keaton just did her. He's a great actor in general. So I remember when they first announced him as Batman. I was like, what? I know. Yeah, me too. A lot of people were. I remember there's a big. I remember I had a magazine article like just bashing Michael Keaton. They're like, I can't believe they did that. And, there's rumors that Arnold should have done it, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, he's a big dude. But <laughs> nice. Well, it was originally supposed to, or at least one of the actors, Patrick Stewart, was up for there. Now, that's that's Mr. Freeze. 
That would have been good, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is like, yeah, Arnold is Mr. Freeze, too, is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It, it was amazing how, you know, bad Batman and Robin got, and Arnold is Mr. Freeze was just, you know, could have been good, but was not good at all. Why, thanks for coming here to this uh, Warner Brothers meeting, uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger. I'm happy to be here. Batman 4 is a movie that I'm really enthusiastic about making. I always thought that Batman should have the physique in the movies, just like in the comics. So, I am the strongest to play him. I will be great as Batman. Uh, you won't be playing Batman. I'm not playing Robin. No, no, you won't be playing either. You will be playing the villain. What villain? The Iceman? Well, you better give me a lot of money and uh, let me make lots of jokes about ice. Okay, whatever. The ones that come to mind. Listen, kiss my eyes. Ow, 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 ow. Hopefully, like I said, I, I really hope the new Dark Knight movie is good. Um, Heath Ledger looks like, you know, I was a little skeptical, but he, the more I see it, I mean, the new trailer I saw, he looks pretty creepy and pretty right on. So, the last one is definitely there. I agree. It's pretty creepy. It's totally creepy, actually. He just The way he walks, the way he carries himself. You know, he just looks like such a maniac. Did you guys get a chance to see the IMAX, the opening scene from the bank robbery? I did not. No, I didn't. I would, would have loved to. It's it's cool. I mean, it looked good. I saw it um, in front of some other movie, and they had, you know, it's a whole build up of, you know, this robbery, and they're talking about a Joker, but it's, I think it's the opening of the film or something like that, but at the end of it, you, you realize that he's one of the guys robbing the bank, right. and, or the bank, and it's just cool. I'm looking forward to it. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm hoping, though, We'll see how it turns out. We'll see how it turns out. But it's unfortunate what happened to him, nonetheless. Oh, definitely. It was a big, big loss. I had kind of like a random question for you. It's kind of silly. It's a very fanboy question. So I figured I'd spit it at you. Who do you think would win in a battle? Hawkeye or Green Arrow? And why? Oh, uh, wow. Um, Is he that, like, West Coast Avenger character? That's Hawkeye. No, he was on the original Marvel? Avengers as well. Oh, okay. In the 60s, actually. Late 60s. Yeah, I never, I never followed Hawkeye much, so I, I wouldn't know, but I honestly probably say, I mean, Green Arrow's good, don't get me wrong, but I think even in the comics, he wasn't, he sounds really cheesy, but I think there was like a rating of, you know, I know Batman's like number one or as way up there, or Connor Hawkins, actually, which is like Green Arrow's son, is pretty high up on like, will pass, you know, capabilities, I think. But, um, I, I, maybe Hawkeye, I'm not, I don't know Hawkeye much, so I can't judge. Um, that is a geeky what question. You... It is, but if you think about it, like it's kind of a logical question because the alter ego of both Hawkeye and Green Arrow are very like stubborn and, and full of themselves. So it'd be like fighting yourself almost. Yeah, and isn't his girlfriend, wasn't he kind of almost like Canary? What was her name? Um, Let me think. Who was that again? It was, um, what's her name? Damn it, I can't remember. Did he call uh, her what's her name or did he call her something else? What, what was that again? Did he call her what's her? I was trying to be a smart ass. I, we got <laughs> Shut the internet up. right here. Well, let me find out. Stop teasing me. <laughs> You're a big bully. Wasn't there a hot, there's hot girl in the Justice League series, I think, wasn't there? Yep, there was hot girl now. She's also in the JSA right now. Okay. Is that the, the JSA what's the JSA? Is that the new, uh... Oh, that's Justice Society. The original superhero team. Oh, that was before the Justice League. I just watched the New Frontier. It's... Oh, yeah. That's... Yeah, Justice League movie. That was good. I heard it's great. I haven't got a chance to see it. I'm going to buy it eventually. Yeah, it's, it's got a really unique art style. I mean, uh, uh, a Saul Bass in the intro. It's a very Saul Bass in the intro, which is kind of cool. But, um, yeah, unique. Did you see it, Chris? Yeah, I own it. What did you think? I liked it very much. I had I wasn't familiar with the uh, original miniseries. So it was kind the of Darwin a... Cook. It's yeah. great. Good stuff. I've heard good things. I haven't read it myself either. But, um, yeah, I've heard really good things. I don't, I'm just, I, I'm not too much into comic books anymore as far as reading them. I just, I, I don't know. They're over my head at this point. I love the characters. Obviously, I wouldn't be doing this podcast um, if I didn't, but I just, it's just a mess. DC and Marvel is just a mess. Right now, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm big. I mean, honestly, of the two, I really am the comic book films. It is where I really... Just, I mean, there, and there's some really good films done, you know. And I always look forward to the summer, summer movies. That, you know, I mean, Iron Man looks great. I can't wait. 
Oh, that was fantastic. I know. I'm really excited. Um, John Favreau's good. I mean, he looks like he did a good job. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. is a good choice, I think. I didn't think so at first. That, then I saw him, and I was like, it, it kind of makes sense. You know, because, you know, Tony Stark's a recovering alcoholic, and he's been through hell. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, came back, you know. He's smug right. and everything that Tony Stark is. He's wisecracking and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I think he'd be able to fill the shoes of uh, Iron Man pretty well. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, another one I have high expectations for. So I, the Hulk, I don't know what to think about the new Hulk movie, honestly, right now. But um, The last one was definitely a disappointment. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, it had some decent ideas, but, and I think this new one could be good, but it, the trailer kind of comes off a little cheesy to me. So we'll see. You know, I'm still going to go see it, of course. Just uh, to throw it in there, it's Mockingbird is the... The character I was That's it. Yeah. You're right. That was on the West Coast Avengers. Was somebody Googling? I did indeed. Wikipedia. Oh, you Wikipedia oh, it. It's, it's the shit. The shiznit. So, I was, uh, someone just recently, there's some website that makes fun of Garfield comics. I don't know if you guys know about this. Um, the cat? They're kind of, they're, they're pretty bad, but I actually, Wikipedia, if you go on Wikipedia and look up Garfield, there's a series, there's a portion of the Garfield comics where he was abandoned. He was, like, left alone in the house and um, had no food and basically at a certain point in the series he kind of started imagining John and Odie and everybody being back around him even though they weren't so on uh, Wikipedia it says that Garfield is slowly starving to death which I thought was oh my god pretty, pretty fucked up <laughs> oh my <laughs> lord crazy. look up Garfield on Wikipedia and then it'll pull it up it's pretty crazy that's a dark version of Garfield the gritty <laughs> dark side <laughs> a little different one cat is left alone in a house. <laughs> See what happens next. Well, uh, thank you very much, Chris, for uh, yeah, not a problem. participating. Um, do you anything you you want to plug? Anything that's coming up for you? Um, you know, it, it's I'm doing a spaghetti western right now. Um, oh, cool. Mm. Uh, Sweet. Fully in the, you know, kind of the Clint Eastwood style. You know, good, bad, and ugly. I've always been a big fan of those, and. Uh, so that's my big project right now, um, but as far as fan films, nothing, but I will definitely keep you guys posted. I, I definitely always have ideas in my head of different things I could do, and I won't say no to another Green Arrow. It, it could happen, so we'll see. Cool. We'll Looking see. forward to it. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Cool. You guys too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Take care, buddy.